While the moniker Celica XX adorned these cars in Japan, the rest of the world would come to know them as the Celica Supra. Shedding its previous skin but retaining the Celica platform, this new iteration sported distinctive features like a redesigned front end and the now iconic fully retractable pop-up headlights. Beyond the aesthetic changes, it made a significant departure under the hood, opting for an inline six engine over the previous four cylinder power plant. Alongside this, the Celica Supra grew in size, both in length and wheelbase to accommodate its engine. Let's explore this chapter of automotive history with a grounded perspective and a focus on the facts. Before we get started, allow me to introduce our Toyota Supra-inspired t-shirts. Elevate your style with these premium tees that pay homage to the legendary Supra. Crafted for enthusiasts by enthusiasts, these shirts blend comfort and iconic design. Whether you're a diehard Supra fan or simply appreciate automotive excellence, our t-shirts let you wear your passion. Join us in celebrating the Supra legacy and grab yours today via the link below. Upgrade your wardrobe and show the world your love for this iconic sports car. Now let's get back into it. Let's take a grounded approach to distinguish between the two distinct models of the Celica Supra in North America. These models, known as the Performance Type, P-Type, and the Luxury Type, Type, L-Type shared the same mechanical foundation but differed in terms of options and trim. The P-Type sported fiberglass fender flares over the wheel wells while the L-Type did not. Additionally, the P-Type came standard with more sporty 8-way adjustable seats and leather interior became an option in 1983. Originally, the luxury type was synonymous with an automatic transmission, while the performance type sported the manual. When it came to wheels, the P-Type featured 14 by 7 inch alloy wheels, while the L-Type initially had 14 by 5.5 inch wheels, later upgraded to a 15 by 6 inch wheel setup resembling those on the P-Type. Some L-Type models, along with a few rare American models, could be equipped with a digital instrument cluster featuring a trip computer. This cluster displayed a digital tachometer, speedometer, electric fuel, and cooling gauges while the trip computer provided information like fuel economy and estimated time of arrival. Models equipped with trip computers also boasted cruise control. Notably, all P-types included a limited slip differential regardless of changes in gear ratios. In 1981, specifically for the 1982 model year in North America, the Celica Supra came equipped with a 2.8 liter 12 valve DOHC 5 MGE engine. This power plant delivered 145 horsepower and 155 foot pounds of torque, utilizing an 8.8 .8 to 1 compression ratio and a vacuum advanced distributor. When it made its debut, the Celica Supra boasted a drag coefficient of 0.348 and could accelerate from 0 to 60 in 9.8 seconds and cover the quarter mile in 7. 17.2 seconds at 80 miles an hour. A year later, the 1982 model incorporated a rear differential with a 3.72 to 1 ratio. In terms of suspension, the Celica Supra boasted a four-wheel independent setup specially tuned by Lotus. This Celica Supra is a true revelation from the automaker and marks a significant departure from their conventional philosophy. It's not just a car, it's a statement. This sports GT masterpiece doesn't just follow the road, it owns it. No matter the terrain, the Supra's prowess shines through, reflecting a shift in Toyota's mindset. It's a car that thrives under intense scrutiny and aggressive driving, defying its Toyota heritage. It's evident that someone at Toyota had embraced the spirit of motorsport and performance. Drive the Supra to its limits and you'll discover how expertly it keeps you on the edge of control, all the while whispering to your senses like a refined gentleman who every now and then craves a dash of excitement. When it comes to steering dynamics, the Celica Supra sets a high bar. Sensitivity, centering, linearity, and effort all harmonize to deliver an exceptional driving experience. This isn't the twitchy, instant off-center response you might find in the less sporty L-Type Supra, which caters more to luxury and gadgets. The sporting Supra's power assist is finely tuned, decreasing with engine speed, never Never imposing itself but enhancing the overall feel. Thanks to the front and rear anti-sway bars and those broad Bridgestone Potenza tires that grip the road like epoxy, the Supra boasts remarkable stability. Sporting 225-60HR14 tires on aggressive aluminum wheels, this Supra, paired with its McPherson struts in the front and semi-trailing arms in the rear, demonstrates remarkable adherence to various road surfaces. Releasing this vehicle with the DOHC engine was a great deal in the 1980s. It marked the first 
first return of a DOHC engine in the US since the late 60s 2000 GT. Toyota's legacy includes producing over 400,000 DOHC engines, many boasting impressive specific power outputs. The Celica Supra's 2.8 liter six cylinder engine is presently tuned for smoothness and daily drivability. While its 145 horsepower may seem modest, it's hidden behind excellent noise and vibration isolation work. The result is a car that tips the scales at 3,040 pounds. The engine's response is relatively flat at lower revs, but beyond 4,000 RPM, it comes alive with a burst of energy. With skilled gear changes and pedal work, you'll find yourself enjoying spirited driving moments. The Supra clocks in at 8.8 .8 seconds for 0 to 60 and 16.7 seconds for the quarter mile at 82 miles an hour. Its top speed is a stable 115 miles an hour thanks to its sleek .34 drag coefficient. Toyota has room to boost the engine output by 20 or 30 more horsepower without resorting to a turbocharger. However, more power might affect its observed average fuel consumption of 18 mpg, which includes some high-speed cruising in the 85 to 100 mile an hour range. The five-speed gearbox, while slightly notchy, offers a satisfying driving experience. There are minor hitches like a somewhat clunky clutch throwout bearing and a tendency to snatch back when slack is taken up. The pedal arrangement could be improved for heel and toe downshifting, but the the brake pedal is a standout. It connects to four-wheel vented discs and a linear vacuum assist system. Applying pressure to the brake pedal results in a rapid response at the pavement, providing a great sense of control. The Supra's ability to stop from 70 miles an hour in just 198 feet is a testament to its braking prowess. The standard transmission for this year was the W58 5-speed manual with the A43 DL 4-speed automatic transmission as an option for L-types. Both transmissions featured overdrive gears and the automatic and included a locking torque converter. The five-speed's highest gear served as its overdrive, while the automatic engaged its overdrive gear at speeds exceeding 35 miles an hour. It's truly a pleasure to be enveloped in such luxury within the Supra's interior. The upholstery combines a bold solid tone with pinstripe inserts and the seats have been likened to the second coming of Recaro. They offer an impressive range of adjustments and substantial bolstering, representing Toyota's wholehearted embrace of high performance seating. You can customize your experience with torso bolsters that can be adjusted in or out, thigh support that can be raised or lowered, and lumbar support that can be inflated or deflated using a convenient squeeze bulb and buttons. Some Drivers may find it challenging to achieve the perfect lumbar support despite these options. Interestingly enough, the passenger seat with its fewer adjustments might be even more comfortable than the driver's seat. As for the back seat, it's suitable for moderately sized adults and everyday kids, although headroom is somewhat limited, especially with the optional sunroof. The back seat can be folded in halves to extend the hatchback's cargo space, which can be conveniently covered by a pull-out sunshade when the seats are up. Toyota spared the Supra from their not-so-great digital instrumentation package, except for the non-sporting version. The regular white-on-black dial instrumentation is far more user-friendly, offering excellent readability and comprehensive information. Major controls like those for the rear wiper washer and cruise control are thoughtfully designed with large knobs on either side of the instrument nacelle for easy access. Throughout the interior, you'll find controls logically placed, making the Supra feel like home for any luxury-loving sports car enthusiast. The list of creature comforts is extensive, including fully automatic climate control, though it can be a bit slow to cool the car on hot days, power windows, mirrors, sunroof, and more. However, one minor quirk is that the driver's visor can inadvertently activate the sunroof controls when swung past a bulge in the headliner housing those buttons. Among them is a well-intentioned but sometimes frustrating failsafe designed to protect children from potential harm. The Celica Supra is an almost flawless car. If only the complex instrument panel could be simplified, making it comprehensible to more than just aerospace engineers and astronauts, I'd wholeheartedly endorse it. Every other aspect of the car is exceptional. Porsche enthusiasts might glance at the Supra, then at their own 924 and question their chosen field. Toyota dealers will likely be serving coffee to waiting customers while nearby American car dealerships close shop. Here's another superb American car from Japan poised to contribute to the ongoing upheaval in US-Japanese trade relations. The tragic irony is that the American manufacturers have the capability to produce cars like this one, or any other Japanese car for that matter, yet they still struggle to believe that American consumers truly desire such vehicles. If there's any lingering complacency in Europe's automotive hubs or Detroit, cars like the Supra should dispel it once and for all. David E. Davis Jr. The Toyota Supra A60 is the predecessor to all of its successors and deserves more recognition just like the Mark III Supra. Well until next time guys, peace out.